Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in, Andy here. So today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the HP Elite Book 835G9, which is a mouthful and it's the laptop you can see sitting right behind me there. The reason I'm gonna be taking a look at this specific laptop is because ever since AMD announced the 680M integrated graphics last year, which are famously featured in the Steam Deck um, and a bunch of other devices, I've been really eager to get my hands on one or a laptop featuring that chipset but I haven't been that eager to spend over a thousand bucks on it. And there haven't been a lot of low price options, even searching used options on eBay that have the 6800U or 6850U processor that you need to get if you want an ultrabook style laptop that has the 680M graphics. There's been one exception that I've been keeping my eye on though, which is the HP EliteBook 835G9. These have been selling for around six to $700, oftentimes closer to 600 than 700. And I've been wondering, like, why are these so much cheaper than all of the other laptops with this CPU? So I finally decided to pick one up with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. So let's take a look at why these laptops seem to be selling for so cheap and it's something, or if it's something that you should consider picking up. I'll cut to the chase and talk about what's probably the biggest issue on this device and one of its more unique alleged features, HP's IronWolf privacy screen. HP advertises this laptop as having a privacy-focused screen that blocks people from viewing what's on your screen when looking at indirect angles. As you can imagine, this kind of feature is naturally going to impact viewing angles, and boy does it. The screen has essentially one pretty narrow sweet spot where it actually looks quite good and can get impressively bright, though not as dim as I would expect. I suspect the backlight is tuned for maximum brightness, which is why this is a rare laptop that causes me wishing I could lower the brightness just a couple notches further. As for those viewing angles, I actually find text more visible than I'd expect from a privacy-focused screen, but the effect is strong enough to be noticeable in normal use. I don't find it too bad when using the laptop independently, though I find it harder to dial in perfectly when I do have the 835G9 docked and I'm using it as a second display with a larger monitor. Since I typically only use it as a second display for a Slack or a background YouTube video, this isn't too big of a deal for me, but it is notable. Hopefully the shots of the laptop I've been able to get have helped you get an idea of what the viewing angles are like in real life. Screen brightness is truly excellent, getting brighter than any other display I've ever used. This brightness does come at a cost of battery life, I think, but I'll get into that a little bit more later. All in all, I actually don't mind using the screen that much, but the viewing angles could be a bigger deal for some of you than they are for me. With that out of the way, let's do a quick overview. This EliteBook 835G9 cost me $630 after shipping. It comes, came equipped with a Ryzen 7 6850U, 16 gigabytes of RAM at 4,800 mega transfers per second, and it came with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, though I've upgraded that to one terabyte. The screen is 1200p and 13 inches, and the 835 does feature two biometric sign-in options with facial recognition and a fingerprint reader. The 835G9 has an all-metal build that feels sturdy in the hand, though not as rock solid as something like a MacBook Pro. Mine is silver and the overall design is minimalist and follows the long trend of MacBook inspired laptops, which there's nothing wrong with. One area where the 835G9 is a delight is the beveled edge on the palm rest. After using so many devices with sharp edges there or with soft touch coatings, I think HP has found the answer here for the correct way to design a palm rest metal with a bevel exactly like this. This laptop rivals the best ThinkPads in pure typing comfort without the fingerprint issues that tend to accompany those. Moving around to the bottom, you'll need to only remove five completely exposed screws to get access to the internals, which is a treat for self-upgraders and repairers. As you can see, I have mismatched rubber strips on mine, I had some difficulty with the clips when I was first getting into this unit and took off one of the rubber strips thinking that there might be some hidden screws down there, which fortunately there weren't, and wasn't able to get the original one put back on cleanly. So that's why I have the replacement. Around the sides, there's a pretty epic assortment of I.O. that you'd expect from a business laptop, only missing a Magic Den Ethernet port, which I don't think you could really fit on a laptop this size. You do get two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, full-size HDMI, a smart card reader on mine, and a headphone jack. 
An SD card reader of some sort would be nice, but it's pretty tough to complain about I.O. on any laptop that gives you two USB-A ports in 2023. Moving inside the laptop, the keyboard is good and feels most similar to an older MacBook Pro 2015 era, uh, where it's soft rather than clicky, but in a way that feels really good to me. Sorry for all these MacBook Pro comparisons, but it's a pretty easy point of reference. I do prefer a dedicated power button away from the keyboard, but I don't really care that much, so not a big deal. The touchpad is also quite good. It's not huge, but it feels like it's the right size for the laptop. The click isn't the absolute cleanest I've ever felt, but it's also far from a clunk pad and gets the job done reliably. The tracking has also been reliable with a delightfully slippery glass texture. This trackpad earns a solid A- in my book because it's not quite as precise as some of the best trackpads, but otherwise is really good. Also, I'm not sure why I just started handing out grades. Just off to the right of the trackpad, we have the Windows Hello fingerprint reader, which works great from my experience. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for the facial recognition camera on mine. I'm able to set up the facial recognition without any difficulty, but then it seems to be extremely picky about lighting, to the extent that it's basically unusable. I'm not sure if it's something just wrong with my unit, but I can only share my experiences, and this is by far the worst facial recognition camera I've ever used on a Windows laptop. Good thing that fingerprint reader works well. Speaking of the webcam, the 835G9 does have a 5 megapixel webcam that looks like this, and the built-in microphones, as you can hear, sound like this. The speakers on the 835G9 are very good in this price range, or at least what I paid for it. They're loud, clear, and have reasonably balanced sound for music and movies. They're not going to blow your mind, but they do blow away the speakers on a lot of other business laptops. Looking at you, ThinkPads. Speaking of this being a business laptop, I do want to mention this comes with Windows 11 Pro, which is a nice bonus for such a budget-friendly device. Most people won't notice a difference between Windows 11 Pro and Home, but for those wanting to use Hyper-V, Windows Subsystem for Linux, or any of the other features, this is a really nice to have bonus. For Wi-Fi, mine came with a Qualcomm Wi-Fi 6E chipset that I haven't had any issues with. It always connects quickly, and I haven't had any drops or situations where it's not using the full speed of my internet connection. Bluetooth, which is also provided from that same Qualcomm adapter, has also worked flawlessly for me. All right, before we take a look at performance, I'll talk a little bit about battery life, which has been one of the other main disappointments on this laptop. Mobile Ryzen processors have shown the ability to get really great battery life, but with the 835G9, I'm only getting about six to seven hours, and that's with light web browsing, with maybe a little bit of YouTube and music thrown in. This is with the screen also on the lower end of brightness, or even turned all the way down. As mentioned, the lower end of brightness is still pretty bright, and I suspect the backlight is drawing quite a bit more power than most backlights would when turned all the way down. And this, I believe, is why the battery life is so mediocre. This obviously isn't horrible battery life, but in a world where other Ryzen laptops are pushing 10 plus hours, I was hoping for quite a bit more out of a business laptop with a U-series Ryzen processor. All right, it's time to talk performance. Unfortunately, I don't have any other 680M laptops to test against, and I never actually tested the iGPU on my old ASUS G14, so I'm just going to be focusing on how things play for me rather than doing any sort of real comparison. All right, well, we've discussed a lot about the HP EliteBook 835G9, so I guess it's time to make a recommendation of sorts. 
And honestly, it's tough for me to really give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down that you should definitely buy it or definitely avoid it because this laptop does a lot of things well, but the screen is, you know, has potential to be a deal breaker. If you know that viewing angles are gonna be a big deal for you, you probably wanna avoid it. Otherwise, it's a really well built laptop. You know, the facial recognition camera sucks, but that's not that big of a deal at this price point. And there's a lot to like, especially when it comes to performance. Um, if you want that sort of ultrabook type experience, but want to be able to do a little bit of light gaming on the side, I think it's definitely worth a look. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about the 835 G9, definitely feel free to ask and I will do my best to get you an answer. Have a good one.